Welcome to Nice and Blunt. My name is Adam Riancho, and although it's April 1st, the day I'm releasing this video, this is not a joke, people. This is my three-round mock draft for, not fantasy, the real NFL draft. We're going to be drafting all 32 teams, all first 99 picks, and go through every single position that I think will come off the board. Obviously, I'm going to be wrong about a lot of these picks, but it's a fun exercise. It's a very entertaining video for at least my sake. I enjoyed making this last year. I only did round one last year, and I want to go deeper because especially for fantasy, there are some excellent, excellent offensive weapons that are going to come off the board, especially in the second and the third round. So let's get it going. We are using NFL Mock Draft Database Simulator. I was going to use PFF, but actually I prefer this one for the sake of recording because it allows me to keep track of all my picks. And uh, I do recommend uh, doing one of your own. It's very, very fun. We will be making some trades, especially in the first round. I do think there are some trades that are going to happen. And here we go. Let's kick it off. Let's start this bad boy. With the first pick, I think this is probably the most overhyped, kind of locked-in situation. We're not going to get into too much detail. The Chicago Bears, after getting rid of Justin Fields, are going with Caleb Williams. He is their new quarterback for the future. Number two, though, is interesting. It's between two players, and Washington is definitely taking a quarterback. But I think they're going to kind of run back the RG3 situation and draft an elite runner of the football a lot of talent, another Heisman winner, hard to pass on Jaden Daniels, quarterback out of LSU at number two. Then at three, the Patriots are on the clock, and there is a chance that they trade down. I wouldn't be shocked if they do that, but I think they have a chance to draft an excellent quarterback, and I don't think they're going to pass it up. I believe they're going with Drake May, quarterback out of UNC. I think that is how the top three will go. Maybe Drake May goes to the Washington Commanders. Maybe it's flipped between him and Jaden Daniels. But if it was me, I would go Jaden Daniels over Drake May personally. At number four, perhaps Arizona sees you know, a good offer and they trade down, but I doubt it. They have a chance to take Marvin Harrison, and I don't think they avoid that option. Marvin Harrison going to Arizona. These top four I think are pretty much locked in. Number five is where it gets interesting because the Chargers would love to trade down and there's a candidate who has added another first round pick to do so. So that is what I project. I am giving the Minnesota Vikings the trade uh, up to number five. They're giving up number 11, number 23 for number five. And the computer is telling me that this is too much to give up for Minnesota, but I would argue they are probably going to give up like a fifth rounder as well in order to make this happen. But just to force this trade, we're just going to do whatever is necessary, give them a pick in next year's draft just so that this thing goes through. The Vikings are now on the clock at pick number five, and they're going quarterback. They're going to take J.J. McCarthy. The fact that they have Sam Darnold allows them to sit him for possibly the full year, if not a few months, and... Just the landing spot alone is one of the best places for success for any one of these young quarterbacks. As long as McCarthy goes to the Vikings, I think he will succeed long term. He may have a bit of a rough rookie year, given he was not the driver of the offense last year. They were very reliant on the run game in Michigan, and um, if it wasn't for his third down ability, I don't even think I'd consider McCarthy a top 10 worthy pick, but they need to jump the Giants. The Giants could definitely be in the market for a quarterback here, and given they traded for number 23 as well as having number 11, I think the writing is on the wall. They will be trading up at lowest to number five. It's possible they trade up even higher to like number three with the Patriots, but here we go. Number six, the Giants are on the clock, and the last time they had an elite offensive weapon that wasn't Saquon Barkley, it was an LSU wide receiver by the name of Odell Beckham Jr. We all know how that paid off. I think it's a repeat situation. They go with Malik Neighbors, wide receiver out of LSU, and they're very happy about that situation. The Titans are now on the clock with pick seven, and their offensive line is pretty bad at the moment. I think this, as long as he's available, is a no-brainer. I think Joe Alt will be a Tennessee Titan 
next season. Number eight is interesting because I want to give the Falcons Roma Adunze really bad. However, there hasn't been a defensive player off the board as of yet, and there's not a comparable edge rusher in the second round. As we see here, they're back on the clock at number 43. I think there's still a bevy of good receiver options available. And while it's really tempting to give them a Dunze, I don't think it's impossible to happen. I think Dallas Turner, the edge rusher out of Alabama, will be a Falcon. Raheem Morris, defensive coach, going to be happy to have an elite pass rusher like him. So he's going to Atlanta, and now Chicago's back on the clock. Chicago can do many, many different things. They have Keenan Allen, they have DJ Moore, and they have some good weapons on offense, but do they take another one? This, I think, is the interesting, interesting pick of the top 10, because if Adunze's on the board still, it's hard to pass him up, but they kind of need maybe another edge rusher, possibly. I wouldn't be shocked if it was Jared Verse or maybe Leatu Latu, who's a little bit lower ranked in this um, system here, but I think... Keenan may only have one more year left before he retires, at least on his contract. It's only one more season. I think they set up Caleb Williams for the long term and go with another weapon. They got to compete with elite offenses in this division, let alone league. The Packers are stacked at receiver. The Vikings have elite receivers and the Lions have an elite offense. They can put up 30 points any given game. I think they want to make Caleb Williams as comfortable as possible. Give him Rome Adunze. At number nine. So they're stacked with receivers. The Chicago offense is going to be very, very entertaining to watch. And now we have the Jets here on the board. I want to give them an offensive tackle. I felt like if it was a few weeks ago, I definitely would have done that. However, they added two veterans in Tyron Smith and Morgan Moses on the O-line in free agency. And I don't know if they have... That desire, I feel like they need weapons for Aaron Rodgers other than Garrett Wilson and Mike Williams, who's very injury injury prone. It's pretty much just Brees Hall. I think they would love one of the best pass catchers in this draft. I have Brock Bowers going to the Jets at number 10. Brock Bowers would be an excellent weapon paired with Aaron Rodgers. So those are the top 10. Now at 11, the Chargers who traded back. This is exactly what they want. They want to address the offensive line, bulk up up front, just like Jim Harbaugh wants, and they don't need a left tackle. That's why Joe Alt at number five is not necessarily the best pick for them. However, Talisi Fuaga out of Oregon State has played the majority of his snaps on right tackle, and that's who they're taking. Talisi Fuaga, welcome to the L.A. Chargers. Number 12, I could definitely see the Broncos trading back because they're not back on the clock until round three, and they would love more picks given their situation. But I don't think they're going to take any chances. I think they're going to grab the quarterback that they want and need because Las Vegas is right behind them, and if they trade back, let's say hypothetically with Seattle, who might want Michael Penix, for instance— they run the risk of being getting sniped by the division rivals. So as much as they would want to trade back, I think they're going to reach on the player that they just want most of all. I'm sending Bo Nix to Oregon. He's played 61 college starts, and he is very ready to go. He's accurate. He can do what Sean Payton asks of him, and he is mobile as well. He can run around. That is an underrated aspect of his game. Penix, I think, is a better deep ball thrower and probably has a little more upside, but I think the floor is very safe with Bo Nix, and because of Penix's injury issues, this is why I think the Broncos are targeting Bo Nix. So he's going to Denver, and at number 13, we now have Las Vegas on the board. Las Vegas added um, Gardner Minshew in free agency, so maybe they don't trust him. I think he will be the starter. Maybe they go quarterback, but I think given the talent, at tackle. They can't really pass it up. So I'm going to give the Raiders Olu Fashano, uh, Fashanu out of Penn State a position that they need uh, pretty badly. So that's who goes to the Raiders. At number 14, we know the Saints have a defensive coach and they need help up front. So I'm going to give them 
Jared Verse, edge rusher out of Florida, one of the best defensive players in this year's draft. He could go top 10, and I wouldn't be shocked. So they're not going to be upset about that at all. Now the Colts are on the clock, and if somehow Brock Bowers is still here, wouldn't be shocked at all to see them take Brock Bowers. But in this mock draft, he is not. They are going with probably the best corner in this draft, if not top two at the worst. Quinion Mitchell out of Toledo will be a Colt this upcoming season. Number 16 on the clock, we have the Seattle Seahawks, and they actually don't have that many um, problems, any that many holes with their roster. But one thing that I think is keeping them from competing at a high level is the quarterback position, and their offensive coordinator just came from Washington. I think the writing's on the wall. They may have to trade up to get him, but I think Michael Penix, if available, will be drafted by the Seattle Seahawks. Give me Michael Penix Jr., to Seattle, the sixth quarterback of this first round. That's a good landing spot for him, and they have some good weapons on offense. I think they're going to be competitive if they can get Michael Panix pretty soon. Number 17, though, is Jacksonville, and while the system tells us they need a corner, I'm not sure that's their true biggest need. If they re-signed Calvin Ridley, then maybe they'd probably take Terry and Arnold, but because Ridley went to Tennessee. I don't think Gabe Davis is an adequate replacement, and they need another weapon for Trevor Lawrence in that offense. So they're going to go with Brian Thomas Jr., a player I've mentioned on the channel for almost a month now. I believe will be going off the board at the latest, pick 17, to Jacksonville. The fact that they don't have Ridley anymore makes this a position of need. I think they will be drafting Brian Thomas Jr., the fourth best receiver in this draft class. Now we have the Bengals um, who are on the board, and I feel like they could possibly go with a corner, but I believe they need to keep protecting Joe Burrow as best as possible. Last year we saw his injury situation and uh, investing in the offensive line. Given the talent at the position this year, I think is a very wise decision. I'm giving them J.C. Latham, offensive tackle, out of Alabama. Not going to regret that pick in any way, shape, or form. Now we have the Rams on the board, and they could absolutely go with um, Leatu Latu on defense. They could possibly go with Terry and Arnold, but I think uh, Byron Murphy is who they need. I think, actually, nah, I'm going to stick with Leatu Latu edge rusher out of UCLA. It could be either one. I think they will be addressing the defensive line because they just lost Aaron Donald. And although he is on the interior, getting an elite edge rusher is hard to pass up on. I could see Latu going in the top 10. I genuinely could. So we're going to keep him in LA. We're going to send Leatu Latu to the Rams at pick number 19. Number 20 is the Pittsburgh Steelers. And the Steelers do have some... Issues in general, um, very curious to see what they will be doing. But um, I do think the offensive line is something that they kind of were hesitant to invest in for a while. And last year, taking Broderick Jones definitely had its benefits. So I think they're going to double up on Georgia tackles. And I believe Amarius Mims paired up with Broderick Jones is the pick. Maybe they go Troy Fatanu, but um, I'm going to keep... The Georgia theme going on that Pittsburgh O-line. I'm giving them Amarius Mims, offensive tackle out of Georgia. In Miami, it's possible possible that they trade up for a quarterback. I would love to see Michael Panix in that system. However, doubt they have the draft capital to do so. And they just lost Christian Wilkins on the defensive line. So Byron Murphy, I think, fits in really well. I think they're going to be very happy with that selection and um, maybe not be too upset to let go of Wilkins, get younger at the position. In Philly, at pick 22, they need help on the uh, back end in their secondary. Their secondary was absolutely atrocious last season. So I'm going to give them a player who, according to this, these rankings, is falling. PFF has Cooper DeGene ranked as the better corner, but I think they need someone for man coverage a little bit more than zone coverage, and Cooper DeGene is more of a zone corner. I'm giving them Terry and Arnold out of Alabama. Unfortunately, they can't take another Georgia player, given uh, they'd probably have to reach on someone in order to do that. 
the trend that has been the case for them for the last like two years. Last year, they could not stop drafting Georgia players. Now we have the Chargers back on the clock who traded down to get this second um, first round pick. And I know that they brought back Corey Lindsley. They restructured his contract. But last year, he was injured a lot. And I think they're going to have no regrets addressing the offensive line yet again. So I think they're going to tr- take the best center in this draft. Give me Jackson Powers Johnson, interior offensive lineman out of Oregon. He may not um, be the center this season. They might still stick with Lindsey. But um, I think by the time we hit next year, JPJ going to be very, very integral to this offensive line. It never hurts to have too many offensive linemen. Getting two in the first round is exactly the way that Jim Harbaugh wants to build this team. So give me Jackson Powers Johnson and Talisi Fuaga paired up in L.A. The Chargers going to have a monster O-line coming up very soon. Dallas is now on the board, and they need an offensive tackle after not retaining Tyron Smith, and there is a bevy of talent. Troy Fatanu could have gone in the top 15, so for him to fall here at number 24, ideal for them. No-brainer pick for Dallas. Troy Fatanu, offensive tackle out of Washington, going to Dallas. Number 25, we have Green Bay on the clock, and this is where I think they go corner. They're maybe going to have um, some issues with um, some retaining some veterans soon, sooner or later. Last year, their secondary was atrocious. At the end of the season, they barely stopped anyone. I think Cooper DeGene going to stay in the Midwest. Not a very long trip for him. The fan base, especially in Iowa, going to be very happy with this election. Give me Cooper DeGene to the Green Bay Packers. That's a good fit. In Tampa Bay, though, I think they also need a quarterback. They traded Carlton Davis to the Detroit Lions, and Nate Wiggins, I think, will fit in very well into that system. Give me the Clemson corner going to Tampa Bay. Arizona, back on the clock here, and they need a lot. Thankfully, they have a lot of draft capital because they traded down last year with the Texans, and we're going to see Arizona on the clock Six times in the first three rounds, they're going to drastically improve their roster. And here on the defensive line, one of the positions of need for them, they're going with Jerzon Newton, the best, one of the best in this draft. Give me Jerzon Newton out of Illinois to Arizona. Number 28, though, is Buffalo. And with no more Gabe Davis, I know they brought in Curtis Samuel. I think they need a weapon. I think they need an offensive playmaker. And I think the writing is on the wall. I would be shocked if he's available and he does not go to Buffalo, I feel 90% confident that this is their pick. As long as he is, doesn't get sniped, I believe Adnai Mitchell is going to be a Buffalo Bill and watch his draft capital move up the board super, super fast. I think he's going to be prolific playing alongside Josh Allen. I've been taking him in mock drafts for fantasy on underdog with the expectation he's a Buffalo Bill. I think he's absolutely worth a top 100 Overall pick in redraft this year. Adonai Mitchell to the Buffalo Bills. Beautiful, beautiful landing spot. They need to prevent him from going to the Chiefs. I think there is a bit of a drop-off in terms of receiver talent following Adonai Mitchell, and I'm not quite sure anybody else is truly worth a first-round selection at the position. Now we have Detroit, and their defense is kind of the only um, soft spot in their roster, their defense made a big improvement last year, but it could get better. And why not pair up another elite edge rusher alongside Aiden Hutchinson? I think Chop Robinson out of Penn State, Demian Robinson, it's it's more fun to call him Chop Robinson, is going to be a Detroit Lion. I love this pick for Detroit. We'll see if it happens, but that would be a nightmare for opposing uh, offensive lines. Robinson... And Hutchinson are not not a good situation. That's that's going to be scary, that combo. So Chop Robinson to Detroit, love that for them. Baltimore on the clock here could absolutely go wide receiver. Wouldn't be shocked to see it. But um, there's just so many good receivers. They're going to have the pick of still some really, really talented options 
coming back around in round two, whereas cornerback does dry up a little quickly, and I do think they're going to go corner. I'm going to give them Kool-Aid McKinstry. Usually, they kind of favor um, defense. However, they have been taking like receivers in round one a lot lately. I wouldn't be shocked to see them do that. If they went Xavier Worthy, I think it would be a mistake. But um, just because of the depth at this position, some of their first-round receivers don't quite hit. I think they may have learned their lesson, even though Zay Flowers was very good for them last year. I don't think it's as important of a pick here at number 30 as opposed to number 62. I still think they can get a really good player. So give me Kool-Aid McKinstry to Baltimore. That's going to be a nice, nice career for him if he does end up with the Ravens. In San Francisco, though, very interesting situation. I think they will address the offensive line, especially with Trent Williams getting older and um, you know some cap situations looming for them once they pay Brock Purdy. I don't think they're going to regret investing in the offensive line, given how much talent they truly have. Give me Tyler Guyton out of Oklahoma to the San Francisco 49ers. Now we have Kansas City on the board, and if somehow, some way, Adonai Mitchell is on the clock here, available, there's no way they pass on him. However, given the depth at the position, I don't think it's what they're going to do. I think they're going to address their secondary because they just lost Legereus Sneed, one of the best corners in the league. So I believe they're going to scroll down the list here and take Ennis Rakestraw Jr., good corner out of Missouri. I don't think they're going to regret that. Maybe they go Lad McConkey. I do really like McConkey, to be honest with you. I wouldn't be shocked if they took him, but I think um, they're going to look at the board and understand they can still get a really good receiver in the second round. And that's kind of been what they're doing. Like, look at last year, they took Rasheed Rice in the second round. That worked out. Two years ago, it was Sky Moore that. Didn't really work out, but didn't matter. I think what they're going to do in Kansas City, based on their track record, is wait for receiver until round two. At pick 32, they will pass and go with cornerback. Another position of need after trading away. Legereus Sneed. So Ennis Rakestraw Jr., you are Kansas City Chief. So the first round is in the books, and boy, offense is really really shown out in the first round. I have six quarterbacks going in the first round. I also have eight offensive linemen and five wide receivers, one tight end, a lot of talent on the offensive side of the ball. No running backs yet, and you're not going to see another running back in round two. That is not the uh, premier position of this draft, but oh boy, this is where I want to continue this video. Like I could call it quits here, Okay, just one round like last year, but there's 10 receivers that I think are going to go off the board, if not 11 or 12 in the second round. And for fantasy football, I am super excited to see where they're going to land because that's really going to impact where we draft them. So I'm going to keep going. Let's start this off with pick 33, just where we left off with the Panthers, and the Panthers have so many, so many needs. Um, I could definitely see them passing on receiver right here just because they're on the clock again in six picks. They have number 39, so maybe they ease up, but um, I think they need to help out Bryce Young. They brought in uh, Cavallis. Uh, I, I believe that's how you pronounce his, his last name. The, the new coach did wonders with Baker Mayfield and Mike Evans last year, uh, Canales, it's Canales. Um, I think they need a big, strong X receiver. They brought in Deontay Johnson, Adam Thielen's getting older, and Jonathan Mingo did not work out too well. So maybe they make a mistake and they go with Xavier Worthy just because of his speed that he flashed, but I think for the skill set they need, I think they're going to go Keon Coleman. I think that would be a wiser selection. I think he fits with what they need better, and I think he's a true, legit um, top-of-the-second-round player. Not the fastest option, but he actually dominated the gauntlet. He had one of the highest-tracked um, speeds in terms of miles per hour when running drills at the Combine, although he barely ran like a 4 6 40. So, um, I don't really care about the 40 time, and I think if they're smart, they will ignore that, and they'll go Keon Coleman. I think that would fit their system quite well. 
Number 34 now on the clock is the Patriots, who have a lot of a lot of needs, but it's hard to get another elite offensive tackle in the third round, whereas here at the top of the second, there's still some really good players on the board. So they're going to go Jordan Morgan out of Arizona, help protect Drake May, and I don't think they're going to regret that at all. Number 35 on the clock is the Arizona Cardinals, and this is an interesting, interesting pick because... I wouldn't be shocked if they took another wide receiver in this draft, but they have a lot of issues themselves. They can take one very deep late in this draft and still get a good player. So I think they're going to address one of their needs, especially according to this uh, database, interior offensive line is important for them. The best player listed on the board would fit that slot for them quite well. Graham Barton out of Duke, you are an Arizona Cardinal. Um, next season. The Washington Commanders back on the clock, and boy, they wouldn't shock me if they went with wide receiver, but remember, they're back on the clock in four picks at number 40, so maybe they hold off and um, take another position that's going to dry up kind of quickly. I have them going offensive tackle, another great offensive tackle available. I'm giving them Kingsley Sua Mataya out of BYU to Washington. Now the Chargers are back on the clock, their third pick of this draft, and I think they're going with wide receiver. They traded away, no, they just straight up cut uh, Mike Williams. They traded away Keenan Allen, and right now I think Josh Palmer is their best receiver at the moment. So they need to address that position, and I think Lad McConkey, if available, I am praying for this situation. I kind of avoided taking him, sending him to teams like Baltimore, Kansas City, or even the um, Panthers, because I'm I'm hoping and praying that McConkey is available at 37. I would I would love this pick. This this would be absolutely beautiful. I'm hoping that McConkey is a Charger. This would be ideal for him to go pick 37 to LA. The Titans on the clock and they could go wide receiver, but um, they still have DeAndre Hopkins. I don't think it's um, the most important situation to do. However, their secondary is not good. I think they're going to go with one of the better options available. Give me Kamari Lasseter, cornerback out of Georgia, going to the Titans. Maybe he'll be sniped by, uh, who knows, the Eagles in the first round, but um, I I think he's going to go here at the latest, number 38, to the Titans. Number 39, the Panthers are back on the clock. And again, they have so many problems. They did get rid of Brian Burns for not really an adequate um, draft pick. I think they should have done it last year, gotten much more value. But, you know, they're, they're making their own decisions. They, they do what they want, not, uh, not wise. But um, they need to replace him. Give me Darius Robinson, edge rusher out of Missouri to Carolina. Number 40, the Washington Commanders are back on the clock. Remember, they were just on the clock four picks ago, and that's why they reached just slightly, at least in the rankings here, on the offensive tackle. There's still some really good wide receivers available, and this is where I think they kind of want a little bit of luxury, and that speed that we saw at the Combine, the fastest player in the rec- in the history of the Combine, set a record 4 140 is Xavier Worthy, and I think he will be a commander. Jahan Dotson was a little underwhelming last year. I think they want another weapon. For Jaden Daniels, not going to be upset with that landing spot at all. Xavier Worthy goes to Washington. Now we have the Packers on the clock here at 41, and they have some options here because they're going to be picking again in the second round at 58, and then they have two third-round picks. They can go in many different directions. But I think... They will address the offensive line. They usually go linemen, whether offense or defense, at the early part of the draft. They have another second-round pick, and uh, there aren't that many positions of need. They already took corner. Give me Zach Frazier out of West Virginia to the Packers. Pick 42 is the first for the Texans here. They traded down with the Vikings, and they could go in many, many different directions, but I think they're going to stick with the player in Texas, and go with the defensive lineman, Tavondre Sweat. I think he's a good fit there, and uh, I think their defense with the defensive coach is going to welcome him in. Alongside Will Anderson, their run defense is going to improve. So um, he's going to Houston, going to stay in Texas. That's a nice fit. Um, Number 43 
is Atlanta back on the clock? And this is why I think they will be going Dallas Turner, not Roma Dunze at pick eight, because you can still get good wide receivers. However, the comparison between Dallas Turner and Chris Braswell, there are not many other edge rushers available here, and it's definitely um, better value to go with Dallas Turner at pick eight. So that's why I think they go edge rusher in the first round and uh, maybe take a receiver later in this draft. But I think they're going to stick with defense. I think their secondary was improved last year, but still not amazing. And they now have a defensive coach. I think they're going to stick with that side of the ball. Scroll down a little bit to a player who I think is a little um, underranked in this on this website. I'm giving them TJ Tampa, cornerback out of Iowa State. I think that's a good fit. Number 44, the Las Vegas Raiders are on the clock, and I don't think that the um, newer coach, Antonio uh, Pierce, loves Jacoby Myers as much as Josh McDaniel loved him. So I think they need another receiving weapon. Um, Hunter Renfro was not the same player last year, and while I don't love Troy Franklin. I think he's a little bit overrated, honestly. I I definitely think he's at worst a top 50 selection. So here at number 44, I think it's a good fit for them. They need to compete on offense a little bit more. I'm going to send Troy Franklin and his speed to the Raiders. A downfield threat opposite Devontae Adams will benefit them, I think, considerably. So give me Troy Franklin to the Raiders. Number 45 on the clock is the New Orleans Saints, who did address their defensive line with Jared Verse, and I think they're going to do it again. I'm going to give them Braden Fisk, defensive lineman out of Florida State. Cam Jordan is still in New Orleans, but he could be retiring at a moment's notice, and I think they want to plan for the future. They also have a defensive coach, and uh, while I do think they need a wide receiver, honestly, I am going to give them Braden Fisk. I think they're going to have a hard time passing up on the value on defense. So he's a saint. And then in Indianapolis, this is an interesting pick. The system is not going to love this pick. I'm scrolling down a li- almost like 10 picks here in order to take him. But I think they want Anthony Richardson to work. And I believe that Ricky Pearsall is absolutely worth a higher end second round selection. I like Pearsall a lot. He also played with Anthony Richardson two years ago, and that chemistry is going to click very, very quickly. I have Ricky Pearsall going at pick 46 to the Colts alongside um, Josh Downs and Michael Pittman. I think he's going to be a good, good weapon for them. Alec Pierce, a little bit underwhelming. So Ricky Pearsall reunited with Anthony Richardson. That's a good fit in my opinion. The Giants at pick 47 could go in many different directions, but they already got their elite wide receiver. I don't think they're going to take him. So I think they're going to go with linebacker just for the sake of value. At some point, maybe the player that you need for your position-based drafting isn't really um, worth taking here. Like They would need to reach on an offensive tackle kind of considerably. At this point, they've kind of dried up. So why not just take one of the most talented um, defensive players left on the board, and I'm giving them Edrin Cooper, linebacker, out of Texas a and Jacksonville back on the clock, and they went with wide receiver in round one. Great pick, in my opinion. Uh, Brian Thomas Jr., excellent fit. And here is where I think they address their secondary. It kind of fell apart a little bit towards the end of last season, and um, I think they're going to go with a Michigan corner, Mike Sainristil. I believe I'm pronouncing that correctly. I don't think they're going to be upset with, what is this, a seven-spot reach overall according to these ranks? That's that's nothing. That's uh, definitely worth taking. In my view, the Bengals are on the clock here, and maybe they go with a wide receiver because T. Higgins only has one more year. Tyler Boyd uh, no longer with them at the moment. But they drafted two last year. They have Yoshivas, and then they also have Charlie Jones, who they took in the fourth round that was somewhat injured last season. So I don't think they're going to do that. I think they're also kind of going to just try and take best player available. I'm going to give them linebacker Peyton Wilson out of NC State. Philly is now on the board, and they could go in many different directions. I don't feel like they need an edge rusher, but they did trade away Hassan Reddick yesterday. So that now becomes a much more significant 
position of need. I'm giving them the Alabama edge rusher, Chris Braswell, here at pick 50. Pick 51, though, oh boy, I love this landing spot for Xavier Leggett. They traded away Deontay Johnson, and the Steelers are notorious for taking at least one, if not several, receivers almost every single year, it feels, feels like. And uh, we know Allen Robinson is not the answer. So uh, George Pickens needs a player opposite him, and I think they're going to counter the you know limited size of Calvin Austin III with the bulky DK Metcalf clone. Give me Xavier Leggett, wide receiver out of South Carolina. To Pittsburgh, I think that's an excellent pairing on the opposite side of George Pickens. Not going to be upset with that landing spot at all for Leggett. The Steelers know what they're doing, and they usually get a um, a steal. Usually somebody falls to them that should have gone much higher. Leggett in Pittsburgh would be beautiful. The Rams on the clock at pick 52, um, I think, continue to address their defense. And this may be the reason why they go edge rusher instead of defensive line in round one. They can still get a really good one. Chris Jenkins out of Michigan would be the highest ranked option. I'm sending him to the Rams, they need to replace the loss of Aaron Donald. Um, number 53, they were just on the clock three picks ago. The Eagles back here, um, ready to go. They could go in many different directions, but I think um, the addition of Devontae Parker signals that they want a better third receiver, and he's not going to have like a long, long rope in that system. I don't think he's that good either. So um, get a little younger at the position, get some speed. Speed, and um, I think Roman Wilson is going to be an eagle. Maybe they go with somebody else. Um, I, I wouldn't be shocked if they went another direction. I don't know if he's like truly the most talented option here, but there are some picks that I'm kind of saving and hoping go somewhere else. I'm going to give Roman Wilson to um, the Eagles. I believe this is like the th- third Michigan player. I've taken in the last like five, six picks. So Roman Wilson to the Eagles. I hope that works out. In Cleveland, they have their first pick of this draft. Um, we know they made that trade with the Texans. So that's uh, that's one of the reasons why they're not on the board here. The Texans then traded that pick to Arizona last year when they moved up. So this is why we haven't seen the Browns yet. But the Browns could go in many different directions. But why not just, you know address the position of need. According to this, the defensive lineman is their most important position to address. So maybe they go with a linebacker, but I think they're going to go with Michael Hall Jr., defensive lineman out of Ohio State. Keep him in Ohio. Make the fan base pretty happy about that. In Miami, they could go in many different directions, but they have ignored interior offensive line in round one, their highest position of need, according to this simulator, why not go with that position here? They don't need to reach significantly in order to take Cooper BB out of Kansas State. So he's going to be a Miami Dolphin. And now the Cowboys are on the board. Oh, boy. I am excited for this pick because other than CeeDee Lamb, like, yes, they have Brandon Cooks, but their receiver position needs help. They didn't do shit in free agency, and although they – May need some help on the defensive end, especially after losing Leighton Vander Esch. I don't care. I think they're going with wide receiver, and they usually know what they're doing. I would love, absolutely love, to see Jalen Polk go to Dallas. I think he'd be used a lot more as opposed to if he wound up in Philadelphia. I do think he's better than Roman Wilson, so maybe I'm just hoping that this is the case, but I love the Washington Husky receivers. I think all three are great, great players, and I'm sending Jalen Polk to Dallas. I think he'd be a monster opposite CeeDee Lamb in this offense. Would love to see it. Jalen Polk to the Cowboys. That would be a nightmare to cover. Um, At pick 57, we have the Tampa Bay Buccaneers on the clock, and they need edge rushers, so I'm giving them the best one on the board here. Braylon Trice, also out of Washington, going to be a Tampa Bay Buccaneer. At pick 58, we have the Green Bay Packers, and 
I still think their secondary is what they really need to address the most. So this player has fallen, according to this these rankings, 16 picks. And if he's on the board, they're not going to be upset about that at all. Give me Tyler Newbin out of Minnesota. They're staying in the Midwest when it comes to fixing this secondary with Cooper DeGene and Tyler Newbin. So he's going to the Green Bay Packers. Going to be a better defense for sure next season. Number 59 on the clock is Houston with their second pick of the second round. And I think they're going with a wide receiver here. I think with Tank Dell's recent ACL injury, behind Nico Collins, it's kind of slim. And although they do have a good tight end, I do not believe Noah Brown is the answer. So I love me some Malachi Corley. It's not a um, big reach at all. And I think he's a perfect fit. A slot receiver that is going to get a lot of more checkdowns and screen passes as opposed to the deep threats that are going to run um, and get those intermediate long routes in Nico Collins and Tank Dell. I think Malachi Corley would be a perfect fit in Houston. And I think he has the talent to really skyrocket in terms of production. Might hurt the value of Tank Dell and uh, Nico Collins if he does wind up there, but I think he would be excellent for fantasy. I really hope Malachi Corley ends up with CJ Stroud in Houston. That's where I'm sending him here at pick 59. Buffalo back on the clock now, and they addressed wide receiver earlier. They need some help on the defensive side of the ball. They released a lot, a lot of players. They could go in many different directions, but I think they're going to go with an edge rusher. Perhaps I have them taking it says they kind of need defensive line a little bit but I'm, I'm, I'm gonna send them Marshawn Nealand I'm gonna I'm gonna give them an edge rusher not a defensive lineman Von Miller I don't trust so I, I I think I think they want an insurance policy for Von Miller a little bit more than the defensive line maybe I'm wrong it's my mock draft I can do what I want at pick 61 here though we have the Lions back on the board and they passed on corner in the first round to take Chop Robinson. I don't think they do it again here. And I think there's a player who I've heard really good things about. I can't tell you I'm like fully aware of all of his tape, but I think according to what I've heard, Max Melton is undervalued in the rankings here and will be an excellent, excellent pick out of Rutgers. This corner will fit in ideally. If they can improve their defense dramatically, then the Lions are going to remain atop the conference and possibly make the Super Bowl next season. So Max Melton, cornerback out of Rutgers, excellent landing spot for him in Detroit. Baltimore, back on the board here, and um, there's usually a player that falls to them, and uh, they're never upset about that. Maybe they go receiver, but um, I feel like that's not um, the best value here for them. I think Rook Ororo, Aurora yeah, Aurora Row will be an excellent addition in Baltimore on the defensive line. Um, the Niners on the clock second time around. Um, I think they're really just going offensive line like crazy in this draft. I'm giving them Christian Haynes, interior offensive lineman, out of UConn, another position of need. Kansas City, though, now is where we get worried because they passed on receiver at pick 32, but there's still some really, really good players. And I mentioned this with Jalen Polk. I love the Washington Husky receivers. Jalen McMillan ranked here at 79, too low on the list. He's exceptional. He's a great slot receiver. And God damn it, if he ends up going to the Kansas City Chiefs, I'm, I'm not going to be happy. But they would be wise to take him. There aren't like a ton of great receivers um, left on the board, and he is by far and away, in my opinion, the best one available. I prefer him over Devontae Walker. Give me Jalen McMillan to the Chiefs. That's kind of a nightmare situation scenario. If they do indeed pass on receiver in round one, uh, I, I would not be happy. As a Charger fan, I hope Jalen McMillan gets taken before pick 64. Panthers on the clock again with their third round pick. Like I said, we're going three rounds deep. We're not done. We still have another 35 picks in this video. Let's kind of rip through them a little bit more. I'm not going to go as in-depth when it comes to my opinion in the third round. 
According to this, they need a tight end, and I think Jatavian Sanders is an excellent one. Give me Jatavian Sanders to Carolina. They do indeed need a tight end pretty badly. In Arizona, they have another pick in five, and according to this, they need a safety. I'm going to give them Cameron Kitchens, the best one on the roster here. Cameron Kitchens to uh, Arizona. Washington, right after them at pick 67, they also need a safety, and that's why I think um, Arizona snipes them a little bit. So they're going to have to scroll down a little bit and uh, maybe reach just barely. I'm going to give them Javon Bullard, safety out of Georgia, in uh, my mock draft. Number 68, we have the Patriots on the board here, and if they take Drake May... Why not pair him up with someone he's comfortable with? You, you know that they need weapons. Their offense is trash. Give me Devontae Walker, who played with Drake May last year. I think that would really help the young quarterback if he can retain that connection with his receiver from college. Devontae Walker to the Patriots. Let's hope that works out for them in general. The Chargers here, back on the board and... If there's a Michigan player who falls to them like Junior Colson does in my mock draft, I don't think there's any fucking chance that they pass on him. Maybe they go Blake Corum here just because they need a running back, but I think there's still going to be good running backs available in the fourth round. Maybe even Blake Corum is available again as well. I don't think it would happen where Junior Colson is sitting here at 69 and is not taken by the Chargers. So he's going to L.A., Michigan man reunited with his coach from college. And at pick 70, we have the Giants back on the clock. The Giants can go in several different directions. I wouldn't be entirely shocked if they went running back. However, they need offensive tackle, according to this uh, website. And why not take one of the best available? Still left, Patrick Paul out of Houston going to the Giants. Arizona now back on the clock with yet another pick. They're fifth of this of this draft and they still have another in the third round this is I think a bit of a luxury pick for them we know James Connors getting older and he only has one more year under contract with the Cardinals I think their offense could definitely use some depth at that position so I believe they're going to take the best running back in this draft if he wasn't injured I think Jonathan Brooks would be going in the mid-second um if he was fully healthy, but he suffered an ACL tear in November, late October, at the end of last year, and that's why he's more of a third-round pick, but he's one of my favorite players in terms of talent at the running back position. I think he's actually really good, and they have the luxury of letting him sit and waiting until next year to really give him the bulk of carries behind Jonathan Taylor. Jonathan Brooks is an excellent pick for the Arizona Cardinals. So that's who I'm sending to Arizona. Great landing spot for him. The Jets, with their second pick of the draft, we have not seen them on the clock in quite some time, and they need a tackle at the end of the day investing in their offensive line. Not going to be a bad bad decision. So give it, give me Kieran Omegaji out of Yale, offensive tackle to the Jets. The Lions, um, I think defense is really like the main position for them. I would love to see them take a receiver here, but I think there's still some decent options that may be available in terms of the skill set they need in the fourth round, and that is why I think they stick on the defensive side. I'm going to give them Mason Smith, defensive lineman out of LSU. That defensive line going to really improve this offseason. In Atlanta, um, they could go in many different directions here, but... um, Again, defense is probably not the worst um, decision. I'm going to give them Jeremiah Trotter Jr., linebacker, out of Clemson. The Chicago Bears, back on the clock. They already took a Dunze, so they don't need another wide receiver. They've addressed the offense early in this draft. I think they're going to address the defense and pair up another edge rusher alongside Montez Sweat. Give me Adisa Isaac out of Penn State. Denver, finally, back on the clock. One of the reasons why I think they might trade down in hopes of retaining Bo Nix in the first round. I definitely think they're targeting Bo Nix, however. But um, here at pick 76, I think they also address defense, and they're going to take Jonah Ellis, edge rusher out of Utah, and not regret it. Um, In Las Vegas, though, we saw them pass on Michael Penix, and 
they probably don't do that if available. They'd probably take him. But um, I think one of the reasons why they might consider passing is because I still think there's a pretty good quarterback left in this draft. And while it's a minute reach according to these rankings, I think Spencer Rattler would be an excellent addition to that quarterback room in Las Vegas. Give me Spencer Rattler to the Raiders. I would love to see that happen. I think that's a really good fit for him. In Washington, though, they're back on the clock with their fifth pick of the first three rounds, and they can go in many different directions. But, um... Oh, did I already take him? I may have... messed up. Oh, yeah. I meant to send Brandon Dorless to... Denver, but I gave them an edge rusher. It's kind of the same situation. It is what it is. Washington will be taking an edge rusher. Okay, so they're not getting Jonah Ellis. That's what I originally had in my preview when I planned this. It is what it is. It's another edge rusher going to Washington out of Oregon this time. Um, Next, moving on, we have the Falcons back on the board. Yeah, Fal- Falcons just picked a few few selections ago this is finally where i think they go with wide receiver the reason why they pass on adunze they can still get a good option at receiver i like me jermaine burton and you know who else likes alabama wide receivers the falcons are notorious for taking them wherever they can get them ridley julio jones they always work out when they go to atlanta jermaine burton is pretty good good value in round three going to atlanta um and that would uh, definitely benefit Kirk Cousins. Pick 80, we have the Bengals on the board, and um, they've been addressing defense in the second round. I think they're going to do it again here. I think they're going to take a cornerback. Give me Chris Abrams Drain out of Missouri. Seattle um, on the clock here and um, could go in many different directions, but I think they're going to address the offensive line and Maybe a slight reach, but it's only like nine picks. I'm going to give them the offensive tackle. Blake Fisher out of Notre Dame. Give me Blake Fisher to Seattle. In Indianapolis, um, we saw them take Quinion Mitchell, then Ricky Pearsall in round two, and many different options here, but I'm going to give them Kalen Bullock, someone who, according to this website, fell about 10 picks in this draft. Not going to be upset if that's the case. Then the Rams are back on the clock, and they also kind of need a safety, so they would have loved to get Kalen Bullock themselves, but I'm still thinking that they're not going to be upset with Jaden Hicks' safety out of Washington State. In Pittsburgh, though, um, we saw them take Xavier Leggett last time around. Now they're going to continue to bulk up on the offensive line. I'm going to give them Cedric Van Pran, another Georgia offensive lineman. They're just looking to Georgia to solve all of their O-line issues That's a good fit, comfortable, with some former teammates in Pittsburgh. In Cleveland, though, um, could go in many different directions, but um, the strength of their team, as we know, is the offensive line. Why not just lean into it? Um, (laughs) Not going to regret it too much. I don't think they need running back. I don't think they need safety. They have good players in the secondary, so just take the best edge rusher available. Maybe they don't need him, but I'm going to send Austin Booker out of Kansas to Cleveland. They probably trade down out of that pick, if not trade up, to take somebody else in the third. But at this point, I'm not giving you trades. I I don't know what the fuck is going to happen in round three. This is just what I'm doing for the sake of my uh, opinion. Anyways, where are we? We have Houston on the clock, and I feel like I just sent... Oh, no. I have Cam Hart going to Houston, cornerback, a position that they kind of need. I I picked another uh, Notre Dame player, Blake Fisher, offensive tackle, just a a minute ago. And we have Cam Hart going to Houston at at corner. But now we have Dallas on the board, and Dallas needs a running back badly. According to this, he's fallen 30 spots almost. I think he'd be a great fit. I got Trey Benson going to Dallas at pick 58. They need him. They, they need somebody good and someone that's going to contribute right away. Maybe they go with Blake Corum, but I think Benson, as a younger player, is a wiser investment, and I think he would fit very well in Dallas. They need someone like him. At pick 88, we have the 
Packers back on the board, and um, they like to grab at least like one receiver in every draft, but um, they have another pick in three selections here. They can do whatever they want and still probably get a really good wide receiver at pick 91. So I'm going to give them um, best player available. It looks like they need defensive linemen, and uh, we're going to need to scroll down just a little bit to take him, but I have Leonard Taylor, Miami defensive lineman, going to the Packers. Um, Tampa Bay, now on the clock at number 89, could go in many different directions, but According to this, they need an interior offensive line. Let's give Dominic Pooney the suggestion for this pick. In Arizona, their sixth pick of the draft already. Arizona is going to really improve their team in this draft. But they could go in many different directions. But I'm going to give them a corner, and I'm going to give them uh, DJ James out of Auburn. In Green Bay, back on the clock right away, this is where I think they have a luxury selection Maybe they go with a running back because A.J. Dillon is not, like, the best option. But he's still pretty young, and they have Josh Jacobs. They don't really need a third running back. Um, Their offense is really stacked. At receiver, why not take another one? So I'm going to give them Brendan Rice, um, just a luxury selection. Maybe they don't need him. Maybe they're going to go in another direction, but why the fuck not? Green Bay always just adds another receiver for the hell of it. At pick 91, Brendan Rice, I think, would be happy to go to the Green Bay Packers. Um, In Tampa Bay, they're back on the clock again. Just like Green Bay, they picked three picks ago. And they're going to go with safety. They're going to take Cole Bishop out of Utah. Baltimore here on the clock. This is where I think they go wide receiver. And I think they're going to target someone for the red zone. Javon Baker out of UCF is a dominant machine in the red zone. So he's going to fit there. I like Javon Baker a decent amount. Good good value on him. And then in San Francisco, we only have about f- six more picks in this video. The Niners on the clock addressing their cornerback needs. Kyrie Jackson out of Oregon will be a Niner uh, in this mock draft. Um, at number 95, we saw the Chiefs address wide receiver with Jalen McMillan. And there's some potential retirement f- looming for Travis Kelsey. There are not that many needs on their roster. They're, they could go running back. I wouldn't be shocked if they took running back here, actually, because right now they only have Pacheco on the roster. But Pacheco was a seventh-round pick. They can still probably get a decent contributor at running back in rounds four, maybe even five. I think they're going to pass and go tight end, I'm going to give them Cade Stover to be the um, apprentice behind Travis Kelsey, waiting behind him in the depth chart. So, Cade Stover, you are a Kansas City Chief. In Jacksonville, this is an interesting situation, but um, I don't think they address offense. I think they're fine. As long as they get Brian Thomas Jr., they are going to move off offense, most likely. But um, their line could... Always use improving. Give me Christian Mahogany out of Boston College to Jacksonville. At pick 97, Cincinnati's back on the clock, and they kind of need tight end in my opinion. And you know who's, like, (laughs) probably going to end up a tight end? Johnny Wilson, this guy that's, like, six foot seven, probably would fit a little bit better at tight end. But he would also, you know, slide in at receiver. They did add Mike Gesicki, so tight end is not, like, a desperate, desperate option for them. I have Johnny Wilson going to Cincinnati here at pick 104. I think he's probably going to turn into a tight end for them, most likely. But um, Pittsburgh on the clock here. Um, They could go in many, many different directions, but um, I think they're going to go with corner um, and take Andrew Phillips like the system is suggesting I give them. But um, the Rams could go in many different directions. I wouldn't be shocked if they went running back. I wouldn't be shocked if they went tight end either. But um, they will probably get Tyler Higby back by November at the latest. And this is where I think they may take a bit of a luxury. Who knows how much longer Cooper Cup has left in the tank. And Malik Washington... I think should go higher than this, honestly, but I think there's some teams that are hopeful that he would fall to them in round four. Malik Washington would be excellent 
in the slot for the Rams. They got Cooper Cup that can be anywhere, but, you know, he is getting older. He missed a lot of games last year, was not the same player. Puka Nakua has overtaken him, and if the Rams take him, they know exactly what they're doing with wide receivers. Malik Washington to the Rams. Oh, boy, that would be juicy. So that's my pick at number 99. My draft is complete, and that is it for this video. We had one trade with the Minnesota Vikings moving up to number five. There's probably going to be many more. I'm probably not going to get even half of these picks right, if not like a third. If if 20 of these 99 picks were right, I, I'd be happy. Um, I'd, I'd feel accomplished. But um, I do feel kind of confident about the top 10 um, especially guys like Joe Alt, Marvin Harrison, obviously Caleb Williams at number one. But 2-3 um, could go in any direction. Um, I think the Vikings will be getting J.J. McCarthy. I think that's kind of set in stone, in my opinion. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe they move up to number three and take May. But um, McCarthy will be off the board in the top five at the worst. You may not agree with that value, but I think that's the trends that are taking place. Um, Rome Adunze in Chicago would love to see that, but maybe they go with, um, an edge rusher like Jared Verse or Liatu Latu. But, um, I think Fuaga is definitely who the Chargers are targeting at right tackle, and that's why they want to move down. 11 would be the perfect spot in order to take him. So, um, that's it for my video, my, my mock draft of the first three full rounds, 99 picks. It's going to be very interesting to see where those running backs go in round four. I think Blake Corum, as long as he's still on the board, is bound for the Chargers, but um, they may need to trade back into round three in order to take him. So uh, we'll see, but um, that's going to be it for this video. Very fun. We're already dipping into over an hour for this video, so going to be fun to edit, but um, I'll have this released on Monday, April 1st, and I hope you have a great April Fool's Day. Peace out. I'll see you next time on the channel. My name is Adam Riancho, and thank you for watching Nice and Blunt.